feeding management of goat. You, we know that uh, goat is a called as a poor man's cow because it requires less capital investment, less feeding cost. It is also synonymously called as poor man's ATM. Goat, it is a, a first domesticated animal and we rank second in the goat population in the world. The goat, our goat population of the country is 148.88 million, 27.8%, a large chunk of the livestock population, it is contributed by the goats. And when we compare the previous livestock census with the current livestock census, we can see that there is a decline in all livestock population. Uh, in cattle and buffalo, there is marginal increase, but in sheep and goat, there is a huge rise. There is 14% increase in sheep population. There is 10% increase in goat population. Rajasthan, it is the leading state in goat population followed by West Bengal. 1.16% of the country's goat population, it is uh, present in GNK. And we can see that there is a huge increase in female goat population, in the doe population, whether they are in milk, whether they are dry. Coming to the uh, livestock population of GNK, it is 8.32 million. We, and when we compare our goat population, with this livestock population, it stands around 21.93%. There are total 37 registered breeds of goat, but uh, only one of them, Bakarwal breed, it hails from JNK. As we can see that for any livestock enterprise, like, uh, similarly for goats also, there are four pillars of the management. It is the uh, breeding, feeding, heeding, and Breeding, I will cover the feeding management aspect. Uh, I will discuss a little bit about the breeding that the male female ratio, proper male female ratio should be for every 20 uh, dose, there should be one buck. Its Easter cycle is 21 days. It is a short day breeder. You know that it is a seasonal polystress when there is a short day length, there is the release of a uh, from the pineal gl gland, there is a release of melatonin, which acts on the hypothalamus to release the gonadotropin releasing hormones, which acts on the anterior pituitary to release FSH and LH, which in turn acts. Uh, so it's a seasonally polystress and it is a short day breeder. Its breedable age is uh, six to eight months. There are uh, two types of uh, uh, rearing system followed in uh, JNK. One is the migratory route in which uh, in the month of uh, July, August, people used to take their small, this ruminant livestock to the highland pastures. And in the October region uh, month, they used to uh, bring back their flocks from the higher ranges. But in the stall uh, rearing system, boar is the best breed for the chivan production, whereas uh, for milk, for milk purpose, Swiss Alpine and beetle, they are used. You know, we know that uh, goat milk, it has medicinal properties. It uh, lowers the LDL cholesterol, you know, which is a bad cholesterol. It lowers triglycerides and it increases HDL cholesterol. People which have lactose intolerance, they can uh, digest the goat milk better than that of the cow milk. Uh, during the cases of dengue, there is a myth that people used to consume raw goat milk, fresh raw goat milk. It has been, it is not proven scientifically, but it has been believed that it increases the platelet count. Talking about the vaccination, we know that uh, comparing to the large livestock, other than the FMD, HS, BQ, goat pox and enterotoxemia vaccination, it is also done in goats. Talking about the deworming, uh, we know that when the kid is three months old, we used to we have to deworm our uh, animals by following a shuttle program. Every uh, three to four months, we have to use a different uh, dewormer for ectoparasites. Dipping is done. So, coming, it is all about these aspects. So, coming to the main aspect of the today's session, that is the feeding management of goats. Uh, we know that. Uh, 
ports they are the browser as they uh, saturate uh, the kids which are born uh, we should feed them colostrum and it should be fed uh, around one hour after the birth of the kid and it should be fed within the first 16 hours we know that colostrum it is uh, it provides passive immunity to the kids and uh, we know that uh, during the first 16 hours the whole immunoglobulins uh, colostrum we know that it contains 25 percent protein and all the other nutrients around three to five times higher than that of the normal milk and this colostrum should be fed within the first 16 hours the reason being that these colostrum contains the immunoglobulins and these immunoglobulins are absorbed intact by the process of pinocytosis through the uh, intestinal lumen through the intestinal lining and after, as the age progresses, these uh, ability of uh, absorbing these intact immunoglobulins get lost. Moreover, the uh, protease system, the pro protein enzymes gets active as the age progresses. So there is no fun of feeding colostrum after the 24 to 36 hours. Uh, it will be absorbed as the normal protein is digested because of the proteolytic activity. Moreover, we can prepare artificial cholesterol. Also, we can for it. We will require uh, warm uh, milk. We will require a lukewarm water. One hundred and fifty ml to it. Two hundred and seventy-five ml goat milk is added, and one raw egg is added in it. Three ml castor oil is added in it, and some antibiotics, uh, ATMG, it is added in it. And these artificial cholesterol uh, can also provide. Uh, immunity to the young ones. This uh, colostrum we should feed at the rate of one tenth of the body weight, that is 100 ml per kg body weight. We have to feed in two to three divided doses. And uh, after three days onwards, we have to switch over to milk feeding. And uh, around 300, 350 ml milk we should give to our kid in two to three divided doses. And uh, after 60 days, we have to decrease this milk to 150 to 200 ml. From 14 days onwards, we have to feed the creep ration. You know that uh, creep ration, it is similar to that of concentrate, but uh, the difference is that it is richer in protein. It contains around 22, 23% protein, as well as it uh, also contains one animal protein source. If we talk about the about the concentrate preparation, we know that for concentrate preparation, there is requirement of the energy source, there is requirement of the protein source, there is a requirement of the mineral source, as well as salt source. I will give you a, uh, in brief, I will uh, give you one formula with uh, which you can fulfill the requirements uh, of your uh, goods. In energy sources, there comes cereals and cereal byproducts. Let me uh, say with an example that, uh, uh, for example, in cereals, we are adding uh, maize or barley. You know that uh, we should add crushed maize. Uh, if we are not, uh, have not properly grinded it, it will be not be fun. It will be, uh, it will come out with the feces. It will not be efficiently digested. It will be the. It will not be the value for money. So we have to use either maize or crushed barley. For example, in the cereal sources, in cereal byproducts, we can uh, add uh, wheat bran, which is also called choker or patri in local dialect. We used to call it patri. And in protein source, we have to add cakes, whether it is mustard cake, whether it is groundnut cake, whether it is soya bean cake we can add any one of the cakes. 2% mineral mixture we have to add and 1% salt we have to add. Suppose we are preparing a 100 uh, AG concentrate mixture for it, we have to add 60 to 70 per, uh, percent, 65 to uh, 70 kg energy sources, out of which 40 to 45 kg we have to add uh, in uh, cereal sources, whether it is maki dala, what we I am saying that crushed maize are jo dala that I am call, uh, calling crushed barley, and uh, 20 uh, to 25 kg we have to add wheat bran patri, 33 kg around we have to add this uh, cake, uh, whether it is uh, soybean cake or mustard cake, 
why i am using the uh, uh, saying two two examples soya bean cake or mustard cake we know that uh, uh, when animals are digesting their feed there is the production of heat which we called as a heat of production it, uh, it 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 is a combination of heat of fermentation and heat of nutrient metabolism heat of fermentation and heat of nutrient metabolism is higher in some feed stuffs and we call them ke ye feed jo hai garam taseer ki hai because heat of production is more in that feed stuffs so in the winter the feed stuffs having higher heat of production should be used whereas in summers uh, feed stuffs having low heat of production should be used so in winters we have to add maize and in summers we have to add jo dala crushed barley likewise in winters we have to use uh, cotton seed cake in summers we have to add mustard cake likewise uh, when we sum up all our concentrate picture will be prepared it will have around 21% uh, crude protein whereas for the creep ration we have to add one animal protein source we can add uh, fish meal because up to 60 days the rumen is not fully developed it is a more uh, behaving animal is behaving like that of the non ruminant so we have to add one animal protein source for the efficient growth of the kid so these animals should be fed as per the stages of the production uh, whether they are breeding animals whether uh, it is different for early gestation animals for the late gestation animals for the lactation animals we have to feed accordingly as per their stage of uh, production so firstly coming to the feeding of uh, uh, dry goats uh, you know that uh, dry goats in goats we use term dry goat for the animal which uh, from up to the breedable age we use the term dry goat it is not uh, like that of in cattle we use the word dry period for when the lactation is completed but here we dry goat we used to call the uh, animal from the uh, weaning period to the breedable age so in dry goats there is the uh, lowest nutrition requirement but we we'll have to feed adequate amount of protein so that there is proper growth of the animal so coming to the breeding goat as i have already discussed that goat is a seasonally polystrus polystrus it is a short day breeder and so during the months of the september october uh, so we have to feed the extra ration which we used to call fleshing either if there there is sufficient uh, uh, green fodder is available then uh our legumes are available because goats relish legumes more than that of the cereal fodders uh, they relish basim lucern cowpea are her better than that of the uh, cereal fodders base sorghum or oats so if these uh, legumes are not available then we have to increase the concentrate for the dry animals uh, i will uh, give you a rough idea that for the body weight we have to give 10 g of the concentrate mixture for 1 kg body weight suppose our kid is uh, 20 kg then we should feed them 200 g concentrate mixture uh, i have already told you how to prepare it what is the importance of this flushing that with this twinning and triplets are uh, common there is increase in the fertility rate there is increase in the ovulation rate the kidding percentage is increased by 10 to 15% uh, multiple births uh, chances are multiple uh, births that increases uh, survivability of the embryo is increased moreover uh, not only in females but in males also so that the sperm quality is better with the uh, we know that uh, male is half the herd we used to the term half male is half the herd so it's the importance of the flushing it is very important we should concentrate on it and we should give extra concentrate uh, during the their breeding period during the, we should follow the flushing so when it conceives for during the first uh, 100 days we know that the gestation length of the goat it is uh, around 145 days or in other words we can say four months four weeks four days during the first uh, three to and three and a half months uh, there is not need of uh, extra uh, feeding 
um, as the maintenance requirement is uh, sufficient for it because the maximum growth of the fetus uh, it occurs during the last trimester in, uh, in which we have to increase the energy density we have to increase the uh, concentrate and uh, as a rough idea 50 to 70 percent of the concentrate which we are feeding uh, earlier that is where uh, earlier i have said that you should feed animal at the rate of 10 gram per kg live weight but here we have to feed the animal uh, at the rate of 15 to 17 grams uh, per kg live weight concentrate uh, in addition to that we have for their filling of the belly during the dry period we have we may use the dry fodder also in addition to that if uh, we should uh, give six to eight hours grazing if if uh, uh, we are raising in the semi-intensive system but if we are following the stall feeding then we have to feed the green fodder as uh, in the soiling pattern in this stage uh, we have to increase the dry matter to four to four point five percent of the body weight during the last 50 days because there is a uh, you know that there's a problem called pregnancy toxemia if there is energy deficiency it occurs after the birth so coming to the feeding of the lactating dose uh, in 60 days there there is the a peak comes in the milk cow of the lactating dose uh, so during the first 120 days you know that uh, if we talk about swiss alpine it has a 284 days lactation length. Uh, likewise, for beetle, it is uh, around 240 to 50 days lactation length. Uh, so the first, during the first uh, 120 days, uh, we have to uh, increase the concentrate uh, feeding to the uh, animal. Moreover, if the green is available in plenty, so for one kg uh, good legume, we can decrease the concentrate mixture by 100 grams. So it is about the feeding of the lactating dose. Uh, dose. So there are uh, problems which are faced by the farmers relating to the uh, related to the feeding of the goats. That the availability of the green fodders are seasonal. For example, in the Kharif season, we have uh, in the uh, August September we have an, enough uh, this uh, sorghum. We have maize fodder. We have cowpea. Likewise, for, uh, in the Rabi season. In the at the end of the December, in, in January, February, March, we have oat fodder, we have uh, barsim, we have, uh, but during the month of uh, November, when we have sowed uh, this rabi season fodder, uh, this one, uh, one and a half month, we don't have any fodder. Likewise, in the month of uh, uh, April, May, June, we are lacking in fodder. If we have assured irrigation, we can have fodder in uh, the month of September, uh, this uh, April, May, June, we can have fodder uh, if we have assured irrigation, but in the majority of the our area is a rain fed area. So we don't have enough fodder in this period. Also, there is a shortage of concentrate in the uh, state. So what we can do to overcome these problems, moreover, uh, there are some candy belts in Jammu region, in which there is acute shortage of feed and uh, fodder. For this, what we can do, uh, we can go for preparation of uh, this uh, multi-nutrient blocks, or we can have uh, formulate this complete feed blocks. We can move towards uh, ureomolysis liquid feed. We can switch over to treatment of low quality rough edges. So, uh, you, we know that uh, uh, wheat straw, it has around 1% uh, uh, protein and uh, TDN is around 45%, whereas uh, D, if we talk about pedistra, the DCP percentage in pedistra it is zero, uh, although the TDN is 45%. Uh, its uh, quality we can enhance by uh, one of the oldest technique, but uh, uh, I would like to mention here that it is the urea treatment, that is 4 kg urea is spread uh, is dissolved in 40 liters of water, 100 kg straw is spreaded over the polythene and it is spread over it and then it is covered and within the six and four, it, it loosens the hemicellulose bonds with the lignin and we can, uh, with this fashion, we can increase the digestibility and we can provide some butt protein. Likewise, hay preparation is there, silage making is there. Uh, Jammu Kashmir, it is rich in uh, fruits and vegetables and their waste, it, go, it is an unexplored commodity that can be used to feed these small ruminants. Uh, 
uh, you we have a lot of uh, lakes and wetlands here we can go for aquatic feeds and uh, improving pasture it is also one of the strategy so firstly coming to the urea molasses mineral block here we you can you are saying that there there uh, there is written here lmm it is a leaf meal mixture for j and k we we have a number of uh, tree trees here and we know that these trees they are uh, they contain around uh, ranging from 12 to 20% protein uh, whether it is uh, albizia kicker whether it is dhaman whether it is uh, mulberry whether it is pear uh, we can use this leaf meal mixture whether it is jamun leaves uh, we know that these tree leaves they are uh, rich in tannins and these uh, uh, tannins uh, other than bypassing the protein it also checks the fecundity of the parasites uh, it's a trial which has done by the scos j and in which we have prepared multi nutrient maker we have multi, uh, prepared multi uh, condensed tannins and rich multi nutrient block in which uh, in addition to adding mustard oil cake uh, or doiled rice bran uh, urea lime cement for binding or molasses for energy and binding uh, we have added leaf meal mixture and it has shown the promising results these feed blocks uh, we can uh, prepare either by using the simple uh, handmade dye or we can uh, prepare it by using this type of machine and uh, we have uh, is prepared by the division of animal nutrition here and uh, it costs around 7 to 8000 uh, we have to mix all the stuffs all the feed ingredients as i have mentioned in the earlier slide after mixing properly it is put over here and it is pressed with hand uh, with this knob and uh, uh, we will have a brick uh, the loose brick which needs to be dried in the sun for one to two days and then we can go, uh, give it as a lick to the animals uh, jammu kashmir it has a diverse uh, agroclimatic regions as i have earlier said that jammu has a tropical region uh, kandi region temperate region whereas uh, kashmir it has a uh, temperate region and in uh, we have in case uh, uh, regions if we divide it we have one uh, peer panjal region which consists of uh, three four districts rajori riasi punch uh, likewise uh, uh, chenab valley region in which there comes the districts doda kishtwar like uh, like that districts come here uh, these are the uh, hilly areas and uh, uh, i would like to say that uh, in Rajo, Peer Panjal region, there, in addition to the deficiency of iodine, calcium, phosphorus, there is a deficiency of phosphorus, very much a higher deficiency of phosphorus uh, in the Peer Panjal region, which leads to the low uh, reproductive behavior of the animals there. So with these uh, uh, multi-nutrient blocks, uh, if we add phosphorus in it, we add uh, wheat brawn in it, their deficiency of phosphorus can be eliminated. Likewise, uh, coming to the urea molasses liquid feed uh, during the extreme drought, this uh, strategy is followed in which uh, uh, 2 kg urea is dissolved in uh, uh, water and uh, in molasses, 1 kg salt, 2 kg mineral mixture uh, and 20 gram vitamin A, they are all added and in, in the liquid form somewhat, if we can uh, fit 30 to 40 grams to the our sheep coat to supplement them uh, in addition to the dry fodder available there. Next one is the complete uh, compressed complete feed block in which uh, roughages and concentrates are concentrated as I've already uh, discussed uh, in with that roughages are mixed, molasses are added and a complete feed block can be prepared and can be taken to the hilly terrains uh, as we can see that if we have 60 quintals of wheat straw in a in a vehicle uh, we can have uh, 100 quintals of these complete compressed complete feed blocks and we can take it to easily to the hilly terrains so moving next to the fruits and vegetable waste uh, as we know that the kashmir region and some regions of jammu we are the highest producers of the apple in the india uh, whereas uh, if we talk about india we are the second major producer of the fruits and vegetables in the world and a large chunk of it goes waste and if uh, by collecting these uh, uh, fruits and vegetable based we can prepare silage and we can uh, fed fresh to the our animals uh, along with 
uh, other feedstuffs and we can manage somewhat scarcity of the feed. So firstly, coming to the apple pomace, uh, as uh, I have already said that 1.73 million tons of uh, apple, it is annually production in India and major chunk is produ produced in uh, Jammu region. After extracting the juice, uh, whatever left, it is called apple pomace. And we, see, we can see that it contains around 4% protein we can uh, feed to our animals. This is uh, one trial of NDRI, which I want to show here that they have uh, used three treatment groups in uh, control. They have not added this uh, fruit and vegetable based, whereas in uh, treatment one and treatment two, you can see that carrot silage has been added as well as pea pods are added uh, by replacing the oat hay. And you can, you can see that uh, they are, these rations are adding in these ratios uh, these rations are still isonitrogenous. They uh, all contain the same CP content. And we can see the, it's in island kids, and we can see that the growth is uh, very much uh, appreciable in treatment groups, as we can see in treatment two and treatment one, in which carrots, uh, silage, and pea pods are fed. So coming to switching over to aquatic plants as a animal feed, uh, seaweeds, they are not available in our area, but uh, we can go for uh, water hyacinth and uh, one uh, floating fern, Zola, which contains an appreciable amount of fruit protein, around 24% protein, and has a good percentage of uh, minerals in it. Uh, this uh, Azola we can feed to our small ruminants. Uh, as we can know that uh, these Azola can be fed in fresh form or a dried form to the little larger livestock also, but it is not, uh, it cannot fulfill their requirement, but it can meet somewhat requirements of uh, our small ruminants. It contains a uh, good amount of CP crude protein. You can see that it has good NFE content in it. How much Azola we have to, we can feed to our sheep goat, it is around 300 to 500 grams. Uh, we can uh, give it to our sheep goats, uh, to the, our adult sheep goats uh, per day. These are the uh, another ones, uh, aquatic plants. New Lombo, New Cifera, Lotus, you can see that it contains 21% CP. Likewise, Pista stratoids, you can see that 20% protein it contains. Uh, likewise, uh, type of latifolia, you can see it has 8% protein. Uh, you can see this polygonum barbatum, it contains 26% uh, protein. Tea leaves uh, as a fodder source, we see that uh, in our area, we, uh, tree leaves are fed very much to the uh, small ruminants, uh, particularly goats as they relish uh, tree leaves very much. Tree leaves, as I've said, that it contains tannins up to a certain level, up to 4% level, it is beneficial. Afterwards, uh, uh, it has a negative impact as it binds iron and as it uh, bypasses the protein much and it is not available in the uh, small intestine if it is at a higher level. But up to 4% level, it, uh, it is beneficial. Uh, but goats, they can digest a high level of tannins also because they have a tannin degrading bacteria, Streptococcus caprinus, in their rumen. And we can see that in uh, kicker, it has 12% protein. Likewise, in uh, uh, serine, it contains 20% protein. Uh, likewise, in daman, you can see that 17% protein it contains. In subabul, 24% protein it has. In uh, uh, mango or neem, we can see. Uh, likewise, in uh, uh, morus alba mulberry, it has 16% protein. So in bear, it has 16% protein. These uh, tree leaves, uh, these tree leaves profiling of the different regions has been done by the Scotia, and we have seen that uh, it contains appreciable amount of protein in it. And this can be uh, explored, this can be used as a uh, for feeding along with uh, other feedstuffs, and we can uh, decrease the feeding cost. So as I have already said that uh, during uh, in a year, there are two lean periods uh, there in which there is not sufficient availability of green fodder is there. Uh, during, for that period, we can uh, uh, store our uh, green fodder 
uh, in a succulent condition or in the in the nutritious condition in the form of hay or in the form of uh, silage hay it is the process of uh, preserving green fodder when cut at a uh, particular stage and is dried under the sun or in, in the machines that is called curing so that it contains less than 15% moisture for uh, suitable crops uh, among legumes lucerne uh, uh, very good quality hay can be made from lucerne for cereals oats uh, we can have uh, oats uh, for preparing the hay in case of grasses uh, sudan sadabahar we can prepare from it uh, for leguminous fodder for the cutting stage is the flowering stage uh, likewise for grasses when there is the emergence of it we can cut our uh, grasses and we can uh, prepare good quality hay because we know that in kashmir region and in the uh, some parts of the jammu region we have uh, snow for 2 3 months <clears throat> and for that we uh, this uh, hay it, it is very much essential so that uh, proper uh, good quality green is available so that the proper rumination pro, uh, uh, environment is made conducive there are two methods of hay making one is the traditional methods and uh, another one is the mechanized technique in the traditional method uh, green fodder is cut and a small uh, windrows are made and in which uh, we call in the local dialect it is as a kunu these uh, windrows these kunus these are then merged to form this type of structure that is called gada and uh, during the time of unavailability uh, we can feed this hay likewise some people you uh, make a tripod stand and die in this fashion some go for fence drying or some used to uh, hang it over the trees or in the uh, their uh, floor of the the roof of their houses people used to hang and make made a you can see that uh, as i have uh, already said that uh, uh, total digestible nutrients in uh, straws in the dry fodder it is around 40 to 45% but uh, in hay it has uh, appreciable amount of total digestible nutrients around 65 to 70% uh, we can see the protein digestibility is 67% in it uh, likewise nfe digestibility is 72% and so coming to the second technique of uh, hay making which is we we call the mechanized technique in which uh, machines are used for cutting the grass that is called uh, uh, mowing or the machine which we are used it is called mower uh, we can see these machines here uh, these are the mowing machine after cutting then it is spread it which we call raking it can be done with this machine or with the raker you have already seen uh, here uh, you can see it is a raker and after raking so baling is done baling it is the compressing of uh, this hay to make uh, uh, it in a shape what we call it a windrows it is one of the methods of uh, billing hay by hand likewise uh, these bales can be prepared to machines also and uh, we can see the difference between the good quality hay and the bad quality hay that good quality hay is uh, uh, green in color uh, for cutting we should do uh, in the afternoon because the soluble sugars are much higher because the nutritive content gets increased during the daytime and uh, uh, at the particular stage that as i've already told in the flowering stage in case of uh, legumes uh, for the emergence when there is emergence of heads we should cut the grasses and we should make the hay and you can see that a green pliable good hay and you can compare it with bad hay so, so moving to the next technique next technology it is the silage which we call murgas or uh, in local dialect we call it the dangrenda achar janwaron ka achar we can say it it is the green material it is the main, maintaining the green fodder in the succulent condition uh, by storing it in the anaerobic condition in a structure which we call silo this silo it is are of different types uh, we can see the stack silo we can see the bunker silo we, uh, what we call khandak silo in local dialect or khadda silo pit silo we uh, we used to say it like, uh, but if we, uh, you have a small number of animals then you can go for uh, plastic bag silo or we can uh, we say it's uh, silo bags likewise tamed silo build silo is also there uh, in which uh, 
uh, fodder when cut at the particular stage, it is mixed with the silage conditioners and it is baled with the help of machine to make it anaerobic. So for silage making, firstly, there is the selection of uh, crop. Uh, for hay making, thin step, stemmed crops are preferred, like as I've said, bursim or uh, lucerne or uh, oats. But for uh, silage making thick stemmed crops, which are uh, rich in soluble sugars, uh, that should be uh, preferred, uh, that are preferred rather. Uh, best crop for uh, silage making is uh, maize. Uh, we can prepare good quality silage from sorghum also. Uh, from the cereal fodders, because cereals are rich in uh, sugars, moreover for the silage making, there should be a steep fall in pH. Uh, so legumes, we know that, uh, rich in, they have more than 16% protein, and this protein acts, uh, contains amino acids, and we know that protein acts as a buffer. They don't allow the steep fall of pH. So uh, we cannot prepare silage from the legumes alone. For silage making uh, uh, from legumes, we have to mix these cereal fodders with the legumes in the ratio of 3 is to 1. When we have cut the uh, green fodder, then we, uh, the next step is the chaffing of the fodder. This chaffing we can do in the chaff cutter. Uh, after uh, uh, chaffing, uh, in two to three centimeter chaffing is done. Afterwards, moisture is checked. Proper moisture should be there. Uh, moisture, it should be around uh, 60 to 65 mars percent moisture, 30 to 35 percent dry matter should be there. Uh, how we can check the uh, moisture? Uh, there is an oven test, but uh, field we know that oven test it is not practicable. There is another me method called grab test, which we can uh, achieve the proper moisture. For uh, grab test, um, for the chaff water is uh, taken in the hand and it is uh, grabbed. As we can see in the picture, this chaff water it has to be uh, grabbed in the hand fast uh, with the full pressure, and then it is opened. If it slows, uh, opens the, the ladu which is formed, the um, mass which is formed from this chaff water, if it opens up slowly, it means it has proper moisture. If it opens very fastly, if it means it has lower moisture. If the mass remains as such, it doesn't open up when we open our feast, it means that uh, there is high moisture. It further needs some drying in the sun. After uh, ensuring that the proper moisture is there, then we have to add some silage conditioners in it. A number of silage conditioners are there, like formic acid, propionic acid, uh, urea is added, formic acid is added, uh, limestone is added. But uh, practically, uh, if you add three things, uh, it is sufficient. One is salt, another is molasses, and third one is uh, silage conditioner you should add 0.5%. Approximately, you are seeing that it is 100 kg of the fodder you have chaffed. Then you have to add 500 grams salt in it. You have to add it at the rate of 0.5%. Uh, similarly, uh, for moist, uh, molasses, you have to add uh, at the rate of uh, 0.5 to 1%. Why I'm saying range of the molasses? Uh, because uh, I've forgotten to tell you that uh, Fodder we have to cut at a uh, particular stage for silage making. For uh, maize, it is the milk stage. Dudharu dana hota jab that it is called milk stage. Uh, for sorghum, it is the duff stage when we press the seed. Uh, a sort of uh, gummy material comes out uh, that is called duff stage. Uh, it proper stage we have to cut. Sometimes uh, it is uh, uh, because of rain or other uh, uh, conditions. We are unable to cut at the proper stage. If we have uh, delayed, then we have to increase the molasses content to 1%. Otherwise, 0.5% of the molasses, it is sufficient for good silage making. Thirdly, uh, I have said that uh, silage booster. You know that uh, uh, when we add up this, uh, mix this uh, all materials and fill up in the silo, whether it is uh, pit silo, whether it is trench silo or silo bag, uh, we should uh, expel all the air. We should have to add it. Uh, we should press the fodder 
very uh, in a good uh, uh, by applying a good pressure so that no air remains inside uh, then we have to seal it for and they should firstly the acidic uh, acid bacteria uh, actions is there and afterwards lactic acid bacteria works so in silage booster it is the externally we are adding this acetic acid bacteria or uh, lactic acid bacteria from outside so that the better fermentation takes place it's a, a work of this silage uh, booster you know that it this silage booster comes uh, different it is different for different crops uh, if you are preparing for maize and uh, for maize also african dal variety it is the best uh, variety for the silage making for maize there is a different silage booster for oats it is a different silage booster if you are adding legumes in it then a silage booster it, it is different and you can see that uh, it is uh, it costs around 72 rupees per pack for 100 grams and uh, as per the company um, is, uh, manufacturing uh, what they have said that how much we have to add accordingly we have to add it add it uh, so with this we can prepare silage that is firstly we have to select the crop uh, cereal crops which are rich in soluble carbohydrates having uh, thick stemmed uh, then we have to cut at the particular stage after cutting we have to do its chaffing uh, after uh, chaffing uh, we have to uh, add silage uh, we have to check the moisture content in it after checking the moisture content we have to add silage conditioners I have said in list of silage conditioners, I have told you, but I've said that three silage uh, conditioners, if you add salt, molasses, and sil silage booster, silage inoculants, uh, you can prepare good quality silage. After proper mixing, we have to fill it in a, in a silo, in any of the silo you can, uh, you can use. And we have to uh, fill the, this shaft material with the pressure so that no air remains inside after uh, filling we have to seal the silo uh, you uh, you can see that uh, we have to pack it uh, if we are preparing in the silo bag then we have to seal we can uh, have some uh, prali we can have add some dry powder above so that to ensure that no air enters from outside to inside and no air escapes from inside to outside uh, after 30 to 32 days in summer and 38 to 40 days in winter, uh, we can have our good quality silage uh, that can be checked by its uh, color, that can be checked by its taste, by its smell, fruity smell. It has, in terms of color, it is a greenish brownish color, is the best quality silage. Likewise, some chemical, uh, we can see, uh, judge the silage through estimating the ammonia concentration also, but from the physical test, you can inquire whether it is good quality silage and how much silage we can have to feed our sheep and goats, uh, one to 1.5 kg, we can feed uh, to a 45 kg buck uh, or dough, we can uh, feed to our sheep or goat uh, for 45 kg live weight, we can feed one to 1.5 kg. Uh, this uh, uh, silage we have to, Add slowly in the diet, we should not increase, uh, add silage uh, suddenly. Moreover, if we have prepared in large amount, if we have prepared in the trench or uh, in the bunkers, uh, then in that case, we have to remove uh, 10 to 15 centimeter layer because up to 10 to 15 centimeter air can enter inside and can uh, spoil the soil. So 10 to 15 centimeter layer, we have to, uh, remove day on the daily basis after uh, removing this layer uh, or uh, after removing from the silo bag we should keep this silage for half an hour uh, so that the gases which are inside they get expelled afterwards we have to increase uh, slowly we have to add slowly in the diet of sheep and goat and we can increase uh, the silage concentration gradually uh, these are the some of the uh, uh, the silage preparation that after checking we have added molasses and salt in it after uh, there is a ro rodent problem in our area so we have hanged from the uh, roof in the silo bag this silo bag it also comes under different categories triple layered double layered uh, in the capacity of 100 kg 500 kg uh, one ton capacity as per your animal strength you can use the silo bag or you can prepare the 
uh, structure if uh, roughly for one cubic meter area it contains it can it may contain 400 to 600 uh, kg green fodder in it you can prepare silage in the drums also in the plastic drums or in the iron drums also you can prepare in it uh, you can see that it's a silo bag moreover uh, there is another problem of uh, heat stress is coming uh, these days uh, i think in the uh, within the one to two months uh, a simple uh, technique i want to share with you that uh, during heat stress uh, uh, there is imbalance heat of production and heat of uh, dissipations uh, apart from uh, breeding strategies and physical strategies using of the fans mist coolers or the using of the uh, intolerant breeds uh, we can uh, apply nutritional strategies also uh, you know that uh, during heat stress there is a slobbering of saliva and uh, you know that saliva it contains uh, a compound called sodium bicarbonate and this side sodium bicarbonate helps in maintaining the ph of the uh, rumen uh, rumen micro you know that for cellulose degrading bacteria whether it is ruminococcus albus flavifaciens or for the hemicellulose degrading bacteria there should be optimum ph of the rumen and this optimum pH of the human gets disturbed during heat stress because of the slobbering of the saliva. Uh, sodium bicarbonate gets uh, uh, out. Uh, it doesn't go to the human. So during the mm, summer, during the heat stress, when the animal is panting, uh, we can add around 0.3% sodium bicarbonate in the concentrate. And with this, you will see that the digestion of the animal will be improved moreover the green fodder uh, which we are uh, if we are start feeding the animal we should feed in the cooler hours in a uh, larger chunk should be fed during the uh, evening hours so that uh, uh, after four to five hours there will be the heat of production so it doesn't coincide with the environmental heat load uh, with this uh, we can uh, curb the heat stress menace to some extent